Okay, so it says, for this problem, assume all conditions and assume uh, and assumptions are met. Do not check assumptions. So we're not going to check independence and all of that nonsense. In recent years, a number of students' deaths have been attributed to participation in high school sports. A paper reported the results of a survey of 3,063 high school varsity football players. Each participant was asked to provide information on injuries, illnesses incurred as a result of participation in the last season. Loss of consciousness due to the concussion was reported by 528 players. Use this information to construct a 98% confidence interval. Okay, so what you're going to do first on here is you need to know what p hat is. You need to know what p hat is. So p hat is going to be how many people said, hey, got a concussion, right? Lost consciousness because of concussion out of the total number of people. Okay, so we did 528 divided by 3,063, okay? And so that gave gives you, it gave you, 0.1724, okay? And then we want to find that interval, right? Okay, so we've got our point estimate, and then we're going to plus or minus the margin of error. Remember, that margin of error is calculated by taking the critical value, so that Z star, and taking the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. All right. So remember, this is a 98% confidence interval. I don't know about y'all. I don't have that critical value memorized. So I'm going to go into my calculator. And I'm going to hit second vars inverse norm. And I'm going to type 1 minus 0.98 divided by 2 zero and then one and then hit enter or paste depending on what your calculator says and that's going to give you 2.326 as your critical value and then you've got the square root of 0.1724 and one minus 0.1724 divided by n which is 3063 Okay, and remember, our point estimate was 0.1724, and we're going to add and subtract this nonsense that we got over here. Okay, so when you do that, you get an interval from 0.1565 and 0.18826. All right, so what does that mean? That means that between 15 to 19% of your football players from that high school have lost consciousness due to a concussion. Which like in reality is not like the biggest percentage, but then when you think about the damages of losing consciousness and having a concussion, that could impact a lot of different things because those people are also gonna have jobs later on, right? And so like, let's say that they had a concussion back when they were a kid, and those repercussions don't happen until they have, like, they're later on in life. Maybe they're a surgeon, and on the surgery table, they have some issues. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so not the best thing, right? Um, so just something to keep in mind. But play sports, okay? All right, so on the practice quiz, what? Try out for lacrosse. <laughs> Try out for lacrosse, sorry. All right, so on the practice quiz, it says, um, a May 2000 Gallup poll found that 38% of a random sample of 1,012 adults say that they believe in ghosts. Ghosts are real. It's fine. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. So find the margin of error for this poll if we want a 90% confidence in our estimate of the percent of American adults who believe in ghosts. So first thing that we need to do is identify our P hat. Let me use a different color. Sorry. P hat. I always think of like P's having a party because he's got a little hat on top. Okay, so you're taking 38%. We're going to turn it to 0.38. Boom, found the P hat. That was easy. Yes. Now we're trying to find the margin of error. Remember that margin of error formula is your critical value multiplied by the square root of P hat times 1 minus P hat divided by N. Okay, remember critical value comes from taking the confidence interval, 
confidence percent, confidence level, this number right here, and doing all of this nonsense to it. Okay, so coming back into my calculator, why is it glitching? Going back into my calculator, I'm typing second vars inverse norm, and I'm going to do 1 minus 0.9 divided by 2, 0, 1, parentheses, and I get a lovely critical value okay, of, oh, didn't do it. Second bars inverse norm. What? Two point what? Three six six. Ah. Say it again. Two point three two six. I can follow directions. With the square root of point three eight and one minus point three eight divided by our n. And remember our n is 1012. Now, when we plug that nonsense into our calculator, what is our margin of error? Are you sure that critical value is right? Um, no, it should be 1.64. Pause. Okay, hold on. I'll write it down. Okay, so for that critical value, Zach lied to me, 1.64. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I had to get the wrong time. Good talk. <laughs> I was like, there's no way that critical value is that big. But all right. Okay. So when we simplify all of that, we're going to get... Divided by 1012, I got 0.025. And that is our margin of error. That's this mess. Yeah, organization, love it. Okay, so then when we calculate the 90% confidence interval, what we're going to do is we're going to take that margin of error and add and subtract to our point estimate. Okay, so we've got 0.38 and we're going to add and subtract 0.025 to it. Okay, so that's going to be our interval. So when we do that, we're going to get 0 0.30, 0 0.355, and 0 0.405. Voila! So, is it valid to use these procedures? Check all assumptions below. Remember, the first thing that you always check, is it a simple random sample? Does it say that it was a random sample? Yes, it does. Boom. Okay. For normality, that's you're taking your n, which was 1,012, and you're multiplying it by 0.38. Remember, that formula is this. Okay. And so when you do that... You get 384, which is bigger than or equal to 10. Do the same thing for 1 minus p hat. I don't know why I put a hat over the n. It's fine. Okay. The <laughs> n wants to party too. Yeah, exactly. Then you get 627 which is bigger than or equal to 10. Yeah. Okay. And then the last thing that we want to check is um, independent. Okay. So is it independent? Yes. Everybody's answer is independent of one another. That's what we assume when we have that random sample. Okay. And the last piece is the population of adults is definitely bigger than our sample size, right? Times 10. Okay. Cool.
Interpret your answer to part B. What do those numbers mean in context of the problem? Okay, remember, this is what you write out when it says the word interpret. This is exactly what they're looking for. I, being me, am 90% confident that the true proportion lies between 35.8% and 40.5% for those who believe in ghosts. It's the same every single time. Okay? You gotta say your confidence. You gotta say the interval, and you gotta say in what context. Okay? So then we're gonna calculate the margin of error for a 99% confidence interval. Okay? So remember, we're gonna use our fancy dancy, plug it into your calculator nonsense to get our critical value. And our critical value for a 99% confidence interval is 2.576. If we're calculating the margin of error, we're going to use that formula that we had at the very, very, very top. So margin of error is taking the critical value, multiplying it by p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. And when we do that, we get 2.576 times the square root of... 0.38 times 1 minus 0.38 and we're going to divide that by 1012 and when we do that we get 0 0.0393 0 0.0393 0 .0393. so explain why it's larger smaller then the answer is to part B. So explain why in E it is larger or smaller than the answer to part B. So first of all, in part B, oh, so sorry. Okay, so first of all, the margin of error is larger, right? Yeah, because in part uh, B we got 0 0.025 for our margin of error. Yeah, okay, do we see that? Yeah. So margin of error is like right there. Ah, quit tripping out. Okay, margin of error is 0 0.025 up here. And we got 0 0.0393. Okay, so the margin of error is larger because the critical value is larger. What? Crazy. Look at it. 99 versus 90%. Okay. So if more confident, the interval is wider. So your critical value is larger, so you're going to be more confident because your interval is going to cover more space. Yay! Good team.